in this demonstration I will show you how to use the function picture frame so when you're going to start uh, surfacing your object sometimes either it's a sketch or it's a blueprint that you found on the internet you you want to put uh, images in the background so that you can use them as reference to start drawing on top of it and create your own designs. So there's a function called picture frame that allows you to position to scale your, your drawings and position them properly in the XYZ uh, axis and, um, and then start from there. Okay. So I'm going to show you from scratch how I do it and how I'm going to scale it properly. So I'm going to go into layers menu and I'm just going to double click where it's written default and I'm going to change this to uh, background background images like that and now I'm gonna go in the top view I'm gonna press F7 actually on each viewport because I don't want to see the grid and that one is a go uh, so I'm going back to the top view and I'm gonna type in picture frame as you can see here in the command line and I press enter so I'm going to go, I've already created a bunch of images. I'm going to go and get, by, for example, the screwdriver top. And it's asking me to place the first corner of my picture frame so I can place it anywhere I want, doesn't matter. And I'm going to press shift to impose a constraint on the x-axis and there's my first picture frame. Um, so I want to position, I want, I need to scale this because I can see that the, the length of it is 9.43 so if I wanted to measure right now because I just randomly uh, created my picture frame I, I didn't know the distance so I need to measure from this point to that point to see if it matches the 9.43 to do that instead of going and getting my linear dimensions uh, for example if I did this and I start doing that right you see uh, and then it, it leaves the dimension like this I don't need to do that I don't want to do that actually because it's gonna be in the way all the time so I don't want to show the dimension I just want to measure for my personal information so you could just go here you bring out the toolbar and you've got all these different uh, uh, measurement devices so you can measure angles you can measure diameters you can d measure a distance a length of a of a curve or a radius so you know, in this case, for example, I will measure its distance just, just for, for because I want to check it, and so I'm going to place my first point, and then I'm going to place my second point, and I look in the screen, and it says it's seven inches long, six point nine inches long. Okay, so obviously, that screwdriver that I just placed doesn't match the the distance that is showing here which is 9.43 so I need to scale this first of all so I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna place a point and I'm gonna say this point is my reference my origin point for that screwdriver and I'm gonna make uh, a copy so I'm just gonna click on copy I'm gonna select my point I press enter and I'm just gonna well, I can snap two points, so I, I use my snapping toolbar and I snap two points, and again snap to this point, like this. So now you can see that uh, my I have a copy on my uh, on my cursor here. Uh, I'm having the second point, and I just type in the distance of 9.43. I right click for enter, and you can see I constrained its distance. So I just press Shift and left click, and then right click to uh, complete the task. So now I place the second point at at a distance of 9.43 so if you want to check the distance you can always go there to distance you snap point to point grab first point grab second point 9.43 inches okay so now I know I need to do a scale 2d of this screwdriver so that it matches from this point to that point so I need to have these lines matching these points so I'm just going to do a scale 2d so I can always right click here on this icon select object to scale I select this uh, image and I press enter so now it's asking me for my origin point since I'm snap in my toolbar at two points so I can grab the first point here I'm gonna press shift and I'm gonna bring my cursor so that it aligns with this second line here okay or you can actually click on, on this on the tip it's up to you so I'm just gonna try and match to this line like this and now I still maintain the pressure on the shift key and I just bring my cursor on the point and I left click 
So now I managed to match my drawing with the real scale uh, in my 3D environment. Okay. So now I need to position it properly. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to say that the origin point actually matches where this point is. Okay, this is where the uh, coordinate 0, 0, 0 in my XYZ axis it's going to be. Okay, so first of all, before I start doing that, I want to see where are my axes. So I'm just going to go to Tools, Options, I'm going to go all the way up to Grid, and I want to show Grid Axis. So I'm just going to check this, and there you have it. So I'm just going to select all this, and I'm going to move it so that we can see better like that. So I want that point to match the center of my, of my axis. So I select everything here, I just click move, snap to my point, and I can type in zero since the origin is at zero. So I type in point to move to, zero, and I right click and there you go. Okay. Now I want to make it a bit transparent because it's too opaque, I want to be able to see my axis. So I select my picture frame, I go into the Properties tab and uh, I go into Material this time. I go to the second icon when it's written Material and now you, can, you have a bunch of settings for your picture frame. You can see it's called Picture Frame in this case. In the basic settings, okay, you can change the gloss, the reflection and you've got here trans for Transparency. Maybe if I pulled it you see it better. So it's written Transparency and I can play with the slider and make it a bit more transparent for example like this. So I just select my object, go into the properties window, select material here and you go inside the basic settings and you can play with the transparency. So let's say I put it at 85% transparency. Perfect. So I'm going to leave it at that for the top view. I'm going to switch to the front view and you can see the effect in perspective. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to the front view and I'm going to do the same thing, so picture frame. And now I'm going to select screwdriver front, I click open and I'm just going to randomly position in your I want, like this, okay. So I know that the tip of the blade has to match the uh, zero, 00 coordinate, but before I do that I want to make, it sh make sure that it's at the right scale. So I'm going to place my first point and I can place it here for example, midway. I'm going to select that point, I'm going to make a copy, I'm going to snap to my point here and I'm going to type 9.43, 9.43, right click for enter and so I've constrained the distance and I just press shift and left click to align it with the first point. Okay, so now I know that these two points are at 9.43 distance. I just select my object here. I right click on this icon for scale 2D. So origin point, I want it to snap to this point. And I'm going to go and grab, so I press shift to constrain on the X axis. And I'm going to bring my cursor so that it lines up with this second tick mark. And then I bring it down so that it snaps to the second point. So now I see that my screwdriver is uh, at the proper length now. So now I can select everything. I click on move. I always make sure that my snapping toolbar is snapped to point and I grab my first point and I type in zero, right click and it's positioned. Okay, so now if I double click and look at the perspective viewport, you can see the result. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna play with the transparency. So I select my object in the properties window under material inside basic settings I set the transparency to about 85 percent so you, here you see better the result so now I've got the top and uh, front view matching and now I need to do the same thing for the right view so I switch to my viewport in right view I can see my axis in the Z direction and in the Y direction so <clears throat> I'm going to type in picture frame, picture frame, enter, and this time I'm going to go and grab a screwdriver left, open, and I just draw my picture frame, making sure it's perfectly aligned. There you go. So I know that the 
point at the middle is the, the the tip of my the tip of my blade is the center point, so it should be the center of my screwdriver is about here where my cursor is pointing. Um, but I don't know what is the dimension for this, so I need to set the proper scale. So I can go there and I can measure because now I know that it's in the right sc proper scale. I'm going to measure the height of my handle. I'm going to use this as a reference to set the diameter in the right view of my screwdriver. So I need to measure this height first. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go and select distance and I'm going to zoom in and find the distance. So I can see that it's let's say 1.37 or 1.38 inches. Okay, so I need to draw a circle of 1.38 inches in here so that I can scale it properly because there's no dimension here uh, that gives me a hint on how to scale it. So I need to create a circle like this of uh, a diameter of one point, let's say 1.38 inches. Make sure that you're in diameter and you, you key in 1.38 and there you have it. This is the diameter. So obviously this is way too big. So I'm going to bring the center of my blade match with the center of my circle. So for example, I can, well, I can place a point and let's place the point. So you have to eyeball it. It's, you know, the, obviously the more you zoom in, the better it's going to be the result. So you're just going to have to eyeball it. Ball it. So here, here you go. This is the center of my screwdriver. I select my picture frame. I select my point and I can do a move, snap to point, grab my point, and I snap to center as well, and I bring my cursor near this, the, the circle, and it snaps automatically to its center. So now I've positioned correctly uh, on the circle, and now I need to scale my drawing so that it matches uh, the, dia the diameter of that curve. So I select my picture frame, I'm gonna right click on scale for scale 2D, I'm going to snap to the, either the center or the point, doesn't matter because they match perfectly. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to press shift and I'm going to left click right about here. And I'm going to snap in quad just to make sure. And I just bring my cursor and there you go. Okay, so now I managed to match my picture frame with the diameter of the circle. So now I don't need this curve anymore, it doesn't matter, so I can delete this. I select my picture frame, I select my point, and I'm going to click move, and I can snap to point, for example. So I grab my point, and I press in zero to position in the center of my axis. So if I zoom extent and maximize my perspective viewport, you can see where it's positioned. So now I can take my picture frame. Again, I go in the properties tab under materials and I set my transparency to 85%. And I can actually move it. So if I switch to the front viewport, I can move it like this so that the handle matches about something like this. Okay. So now you've got the three images perfectly matching, all at the proper scale, and ready to start uh, doing your surfacing work. So if I go back to my four viewports, this is what it looks like, okay? And you're all set to start working. So what I would do is that I would change layers, I would lock this one, and then I could start working on my screwdriver, okay? I'll do a little demonstration on how I surface that a screwdriver but for now it's for you to practice to understand how picture frame works how to position your objects in XYZ and how to set for example the transparency and set it to the, its proper scale that's the most important part it's sca uh, scaling it to its proper scale and in 3d you always draw one to one scale okay so hope it was useful for you and thank you for your attention